Uh, I'm Carlos, I'm a software consultant. I'm the GraphQL Hong Kong organizer. And also I'm trying to push forward the GraphQL community here in Singapore. Yesterday we've got the second meetup and a, the second speaker is gonna be Thor from Strap and he's also co-organizer. So uh, really check it out. GraphQL is exploring and a, it's gonna be super interesting here in Singapore. And also I've created the space at GraphQL API that is gonna be uh, the resources that we are gonna use today in order to do the live code demo. Uh, and you can find me in at SWCarlosRJ in the internet, GitHub, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, everywhere. Um, I got a run, I'm gonna go super fast today because in 10 p.m. I got a fly, I got the international flight, so hopefully I'm not gonna miss it. <laughs> let's let's try it. And so I'm gonna go super fast, it, then if you have any questions, please like ping me out in Twitter or in my email or a, in GitHub. Uh, I'm super happy to discuss anything about GraphQL. So I have just a quick question, like how many of you guys know what is GraphQL? How many of you, are you working with GraphQL? How many, how many of you, ha, are you working in production with, with GraphQL? Probably the same. In, pro, in production? Okay, oh that's pretty nice. Okay, cool. So then I'm gonna go even faster. <laughs> uh, awesome, so the agenda for today, we are gonna see how and why GraphQL was that, that, that good with TypeScript. And we are gonna do a live coding, full, a full live coding demo, uh, getting a GraphQL server with JavaScript above into TypeScript and do the same with the client. So a React app with a GraphQL in JavaScript and then above into TypeScript and see the benefits. So before I st I'm gonna skip the, the joke, sorry. <laughs> so I, <laughs> okay, let, let's, do, let's do one joke. So, uh, okay, cool. Well, yeah. <laughs> what the developers say, uh, say to the repository? Anyone? Any clue? You, you cannot say anything. No? I'm pretty sure that you have said this to your friends a lot. So they say, fuck, fuck you. <laughs> cool. Um, okay, so I'm going to start then. GraphQL and TypeScript. Uh, we probably know that GraphQL is good for overfetching, underfetching, the type system, the introspectability, and so on. Uh, if you don't know what is TypeScript, TypeScript is a type super of JavaScript that basically has types in our front-end sites or in our back-end sites. If we are using JavaScript, for example, with Node. Then we have together TypeScript and GraphQL, both of them they start and ends with JavaScript. Uh, they are strong, uh, they are like strong toolings uh, for large application. Uh, TypeScript is back for a, a Microsoft, so you are fine with TypeScript nowadays, and then I like to call it the state of art for JavaScript. Every single week we got new uh, new features, and uh, they are incredible. So we would like to introspect our API with GraphQL, but also we want to introspect our database with TypeScript. So uh, we do know that um, TypeScript has a type system, and there should be some images, but they are not showing up. And uh, we want, okay, we'll get. So TypeScript is based on a, type, a strongly type system, and that's good because we are gonna have a type and introspectable contract between our server and our client. And GraphQL specification is just introspectable, so we are gonna be able to see all the fields available in our API. So we are passing from having an incredible type uh, APIs where our graphical schema is gonna, is gonna be our single source of truth, and we want to extend our types to both to our backend and to our front end sites. Even we can start from the database and extend all, all, the, all these types through our application because we want to achieve this uh, paradise, the end to end type safe applications. So we are gonna be using the type generator, it's called GraphQL CodeGen. It's an open source tooling created by the Kill, and basically we are gonna auto-generate types based on our GraphQL implementation for both backend and frontend. So we are gonna start with the live coding, we're gonna first explore the code base, get a GraphQL server with touch, TypeScript and do the same with the client. So we are gonna be using the SpaceX GraphQL API, so you can just feel free to check it out. All the uh, uh, code base is open source, and you can see both uh, how I implemented the, the Spaces GraphQL API. So we're gonna have a Mongo database and then I created a, a GraphQL service and then also the client with React and TypeScript. So, okay, cool. So now I'm gonna open my ID and we are gonna go to the server side. Uh, I'm gonna just show you guys like the code base. So we're gonna have an index and that in index is gonna contain two servers. So that's why I've got two uh, APIs of my GraphQL and my REST. And even if you wanna check the REST, API is just 34 lines of code. So I'm using this incredible open source library called Sofa API that is using Open API by default. And I'm gonna expose my type GraphQL schema. And from there, I'm gonna auto-generate a fully typed and fully documented REST API from my GraphQL schema, which is incredible, in order to expose the a, a documentation using just Swagger. So 
for also from GraphQL, you can actually a REST API, which is just a blow money. So then we are going to have some kind of like util, some filter where they're going to be like to find, limiting, offset, between sorting, and ordering. And uh, we are going to have types. We don't have like any types yet, just we have just the context here. And uh, then we can see the, the GraphQL server. So basically, we can see here that we are going to be using Apollo server, and we, are just pa you, we just have to pass the schema and the context. And then we are going to check the context that is going to contain the database. And um, basically, as, as I've said you before, guys, that we're going to have this public uh, spaces Mongo database with a lot of like, real data. And uh, even if you want to check it out, you can just like you know just go to a MongoDB client and just pass this URL, and you, you can just check all the info. Uh, so now let's go to the most important thing in GraphQL, which is going to be our GraphQL schema. So if we if we open the schema and we see how we have structured our schema, they are it's, it's just structured by domain. So let's say that we're going to have several collections and several database uh, tables in our database called capsules, and probably we're going to have histories, and we're going to have like launches, and we're going to have missions, and also we're going to have rockets. So if we go to the rockets, we are going to have type def and, um, and resolvers, as for example in our CL. So now we are going to open the type and resolvers, and if you, even if you don't know anything about GraphQL, TypeScript, uh, or JavaScript, you are going to be able to see that we are defining some query entry points. So GraphQL is based in query, mutation, and subscriptions. Query is to fetch data, mutation is to mutate data, and subscription to subscribe to data. So in this case, we are going to just fetch data. So let's say that we are in REST. So in REST, probably what we are going to have, if we want to fetch the rockets, we're going to have a slash rockets, right? And if we want to get just a one single rocket by ID, probably we are going to have something like this. So in GraphQL, the representation, in this way of creating GraphQL servers with SDL and a schema first with a pull server, that's what we are going to do. And uh, here, like, we have to uh, uh, tell uh, 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 this query entry point field that we have to pass as required an ID because we have to get this ID in order to go to the database and get the data. So also, what is important for GraphQL is that every single field that we are exposing to our API is tagged. And that means that we are going to have su such a useful information. And uh, then we can see here that when we are asking for rockets, we are going to get an array of type rockets, and that rocket is going to contain is going to contain uh, several types. Where there are a GraphQL primitive types, or also complex types, like for example, rocket fear stage, that is going to contain other like GraphQL primitive types or, or complex types. So okay, we cool here, and then we are going to see how we are going to return the data. So if we if we have declared like two query entry point field that they are going to be rockets and rockets here in our resolver we are going to resolve those query entry point fields. So let's say that we are asking for the rockets. So this is what we are going to return. So if I return an array null, that's what I'm going to get in the when I hit in the API. So you can see here I get in the database from the context. I'm going to the rockets collection. I'm going to do some finding, sorting, and skipping, and limiting. And then I'm going to convert it to an array and I'm going to return that data. And we are going to do the same with the rockets. We are going to receive the ID that is required for my second argument in the function. Uh, and then we are going to find by ID and we are going to destroy to the first element. OK, so we pull here. So I'm going to go to the server and I'm going to just start it. And we are going to see how GraphQL looks like. Let's, let's hope that everything is going to work. Uh, this is the live coding things. OK, it's working. So now we are going to open this. And this is GraphQL. So even if I started tomorrow in a new company and they have the API in GraphQL, I'm going to just open bracket. And then I'm going to just introspect my API. So let's say that I'm going to just represent the rocket. So I'm going to get ID from the rockets, the name, and let's say the cost per launch. And even I can create an alias. So I don't have to pass for commit case to uh, a snap case, as we can see here. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, then if I'm going to get a rocket, so we can just get the ID, which is Falcon Heavy. And then I can introspect my arguments, and then I'm gonna get a the just one single rocket. So we get here, and now what we are gonna do is like what we do, what what uh, usually doing our in our companies is we are gonna evolve our API. So we are gonna add a new field to our API. So I'm gonna just go to this inquiry of visual core extension in order to check my pull request, and there is a pull request called add rock in my query field. So I'm gonna check out the branch. I'm going to see the diff, which is here. And we are going to see that we've got a new query entry point called rocket by name, which is going to have a require uh, uh, input field, which is going to be the name. It's going to be in a string. And we're we going to return a rocket. So it's kind of the same rocket by ID, but just rocket by name. And also, we can check here that we have changed ID from lowercase to the uppercase. 
So now what I'm going to do here, if I go back to my type devs, and uh, then we can just check the type definition, we are going to see the new evolution of my API, so we can see the new rocket band name, and I'm going to uh, start again my server. So everything looks good, I don't have any error, and now hopefully the, uh, uh, the server is going to start, it started, and now I'm going to do the same. I'm going to go to the history, I'm going to check that the rockets are working, so I'm going to hit the rockets, and then I'm going to go to my rockets. Uh, what is happening here, that at first, like, GraphQL is telling me that I have a error because we have already declared that it's going to be uppercase, so I can just introspect and I'm going to have the ID. And now when I'm hitting play, uh, I'm getting a new, but I know that this input data is in my database, so what is going on here? Uh, so first, this is a common problem that we have always and so avoid. We don't want to expose our API to the rest of the world when we are having an in inconsistent state of our API. So basically what is happening here, as we have changed this argument, when we go to our resolvers, this ID is not ideal our case anymore, it's not uppercase. And we are exposing, let's say if we are Facebook, we are exposing this API, that it looks like it's fine, our code base, but there are like millions of people and millions of requests per second, and they are getting no, and this is going to break a lot of, not just applications, but also companies. So we have the tooling in order to avoid this problem. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to auto generate the TypeScript type based in my GraphQL schema, and I'm going to type my resolvers. So if we can see here now in, in the diff, we are going to get all the types. So we can see that there are like more than 5,000 lines of types, and we want them. Even if you don't, if you don't like types, but you, your CTO tells you that you're gonna type your either backing or your front end side, you want to type, or the types that you wanna use some are those that you don't have to write. You want to auto generate them from your single source of truth and then type your code base. So basically what we're gonna do right now is, I'm gonna just type my query resolvers, query resolver dot resolvers, and I'm gonna get in runtime an error that this ID is not ID lowercase anymore. So now if I run my server again, I'm gonna get a runtime error, and I'm not gonna expose an inconsistent state of my application. So let's say that I, I don't know what is this, I have an error, so I'm gonna just introspect, and I'm gonna just get this data. And also, we can go further, let's say that I join a company like tomorrow, and I don't have an idea of what is GraphQL, what is TypeScript, but someone just told me that I have to implement the business logic for my rocket by name. So I just gonna do control space, I'm gonna look for rocket by name, oh, I've got it here, this is gonna be an async function that is gonna have, that is gonna return something like here, and uh, we are gonna also introspect all the arguments because we have already declared this information in our GraphQL schema, and then also we can inspect our context. So we are gonna get the database and we are gonna find by ID, uh, we are gonna find by name, sorry. And now when I'm saving this, if I'm not having any uh, single compilation, uh, the runtime error in my ID, I know that the API is gonna work and it's gonna return the data that I'm looking for. Uh, so now we are gonna restart the server again and we are gonna just check that uh, if we go to the rockets, the rockets are working. Uh, we go to the rocket by ID before it was not working. Now we're gonna get the data. And now if we can just check uh, Falcon Heavy by uh, name, even we can just get more data. Uh, name, or, okay, it's rocket by name. And then we are gonna get all the data as we have requested. What time is it? Okay, I have 10 minutes. So this is the server side. So now we are gonna go quickly to the serv to the client side. And a, okay, cool. So now, a, um, let me just go back to the uh, initial step of the app. So here we get, and now we are gonna go to the front end side. With the front end side, we are gonna do kind of the same. So we are gonna check the client. In the client, we are gonna have just two files. So the index and the app. So let's go first to the index. So we are gonna have a Apollo provider. We have to pass the client instance that we are gonna be using Apollo client for Apollo Boost. And then we are gonna use also Suspense and we are gonna have the app that is, is being lazy loading for uh, React.lazy. And then if we check our app, uh, basically if you do not probably React, this is our GSX and we don't know where is this, this data coming from, but we can see all the information that we are displaying. So we are, we are gonna display a mission name, a rocket name, and details and an image. And I, I'm gonna just go to the client here and just do start. And then I'm gonna do it here same. 
So we are gonna see the, 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 the app, and uh, then we are gonna, let's check the app first. So this is gonna be our front end side. So as I've already told you, we are gonna have uh, the mission name, the rocket name, the description, and one image. I don't know if you guys, if you like uh, uh, SpaceX, but uh, for me it's like super like crazy stuff what they are doing, but uh, okay, cool. Uh, let's go back to the ID. Awesome. So uh, as you as you know, we can just like introspect Arabia from GraphQL. GraphQL. We don't have to go to the documentation at all. And uh, then we are gonna just like this is our query, a GraphQL query. And then we are gonna just pass this query to use query from Apollo Red Higgs in order to get the data, the loading, and the stereo states on my API call. So probably we know this. If you don't know, it's pretty nice. Uh, but we can even do much better. I'm gonna do everything for. Oh, okay, so I'm gonna just show you guys that. Uh, if I change this, uh, everything looks good. You don't have any error, but probably rugged is not defined. It's going to be undefined. So if you try to access to the name of undefined, uh, you are going to, of course, you are going to break the, 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 the UI, right? So we are going to have an error. We don't have. We have. We want to always avoid this. Okay. So I'm going to go just like go through the the solution. Uh, first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate the Apollo GraphQL uh, Visual Core extension that is going to allow me to introspect my API from my ID so I don't have to leave Visual Code never, which is awesome. So basically, we are going to have a Apollo.config.js. Uh, we we got to pass our GraphQL uh, production ready API URL in order to load all our types so we can see here how we are going to load all the data all the data and now also what i'm going to do is uh, auto generate all my types from my graphql documents let's say i'm going to auto generate all these types so my return data in this case data is any but now we are going to type and we are going to get uh, the data because we don't know what we are asking for and even like we don't know there is an id uh, this is a string and this is a, an array of strings cool so i'm going to do the same Jarn gql jam and uh, we are gonna we are gonna do same. So we can see here the diff, and we are gonna get all the types regarding my graphical query in all my front end. So we can see the the, the, the types. In this case, it are gonna be like 500 types, and we can see here the launches that we are requesting the ID, the mission name, the links, the uh, uh, the detail, the links, and the rocket, and the the subtypes. Cool. So we are good, cool here, but the same. We want to evolve our API, and we want to provide the best developer experience, uh, the best one to our front-end uh, developer, whether they are senior or they are junior. So now let's say that I want to evolve my client. So what I'm going to do right now is like press control space, and I'm going to have all my fields available in my API. So let's say that I have to represent the SIPs. Even GraphQL knows that SIP is a complex type, so it's going to require me to just get the ID, the name, uh, the home port, even I can put an alias here in order to don't do the parse in the, in the client, and an image. So now when I save in this, I'm going to auto-generate the types for my, the, for my new evolution of my, um, of my client. So we can see here the new types, and we can see that we have added the, the, the SIPs with all this information. So that means that now, to finish this talk, if I type my return data, there's going to be get launches dot uh, query, I'm going to save this and we can see the data that is already typed and we have all the information. So if I want to just evolve it, I just have to do to my a, a return function on my map, just click control space, I'm going to have my SIPs and then I'm just going to iterate them. So I'm going to do uh, SIPs dot a, I'm going to just do a filter and just do a boolean to uh, remove some like new fields a, and then I'm just going to map it. And uh, we can do the same here. So let's say that this is going to be kind of like a div. And uh, we are going to have here an uh, well, yeah, well, H3. So the point, as C is a complex type, we do not the information that we are getting. So we can also introspect our map inside of our shapes. And we're going to get the ID. We are going to get the uh, name. We are going to get the port with the alias. And we are going to get the uh, image. So now it's super easy just to, 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 to display this information. So we can just like do bold and get a beautiful bold here and then just put the name here. And then I just gonna put the image and that's it because I don't have time. So image and then this is gonna be the image. And then we can just go to and just put it a uh, hundred width and we can just even like for, for, for some reason it's, it's, it's not here, but probably because I've, I've done home. And this is pretty cool because probably I have this mistake, but I didn't like realize it in my front end. So now I can just come here, do control space, 
go to the top and check which are the available. So now if I put home, it does not gonna be error. And if that means if I don't have any error in my front end side, now when I go back to my uh, uh, client side, we can see here the mission name, the rocket name, the uh, description, the rocket image, and also all my shapes where the rocket they are gonna land. And we can see how everything it was already done. So uh, that's all for me. Uh, you've got all the slides there. I'm gonna send the slides to the uh, Meetup organizer and then you can check it if you want it. And please like follow me, uh, 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 like reach me on Twitter if you have any questions because I will, uh, be, uh, I will be super happy to, to, to answer them. So thanks so much and uh, 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 enjoy the, the night. <laughs>